Hey guys, Christian from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the Jan 2023 PUA paper 2. If you want to check out the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it says Jumani owns an upholstery store. The accounts clerk prepared the following trial balance for the year ended 31st December 2022. Okay, so it's headed up properly. Uh, so what we have, we have revenue on the credit side, that's where it's supposed to be. Purchases, cash, inventory, receivables, all debit side, that's correct. Uh, accounts payable, credit side, yes. Non-current assets, debit side, yes. Capital on the credit side, yes. And two expense items, debit side, yes. And the trial balance seems to balance. Okay, so what's the story? Let's take a look at the next page. Okay, so it says a review by the internal auditor revealed the following errors. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six errors. If you look at what, what was required for the question, it says prepare corrected trial balance as at 31st December 2022. So they give you what to fill out and it's 10 marks. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up to the initial trial balance. We're gonna also put up on the screen, what you call it, the errors, and we're gonna correct as we go along. Okay, so the first error is a sale, a cash sale of 590 was recorded correctly in the revenue account, but recorded as 509 on the correct side of the cash book. Okay, so what does that mean? So 590 was the correct amount. We recorded um, in the revenue account. So in revenue, it was, it was fine. It was credited there, but we debited the cash book of 509. Now that's not the correct amount. That's actually an error of transposition where the digits were mixed up, right? So it's too low. The correct amount is 590. We put 509, which is $81 less. So what that means is we have to actually add $81 to cash. All right. Uh, let me just take a quick look and see if we have any other adjustments to make the cash. Uh, the total of the accounts payable account was overstated 469. So for accounts payable, we have to subtract. Overstating means it's too much. So we have to subtract by um, 469 from that figure. We paid 150 for utilities. It was credited to cash, but debited twice to utilities. Right, so we're not supposed to debit twice. So we have to undo one of the debits, which means crediting the account, or in this case, subtracting 150 from it, because expenses have debit balances, right? Um, a check of 250 received from a credit customer was debited in the cash book which is correct, no other entry was made at all. So if you debit the cash book, you have to credit where it's coming from, you have to credit the receivables to reduce it, right? Um, the total of the purchases account, which is returns, sorry, and sales returns were omitted. Oh, well, we just had to put those in, all right? And uh, discount received of 1300 was added to capital. Why? Well, it means capital is too high, so we have to reduce it, and then we have to put that 1300 as a separate discount received item. Okay, so let's start from the top. So the revenue figure was correct. That was three seventy nine nine hundred. Purchases also had no adjustment. Now the cash figure, right? So it started off as twenty thousand, but don't forget we had to add the eighty one dollars, right? So twenty thousand plus well, I have five ninety minus five one nine to show how we got the eighty one. So that's going to give us twenty thousand and eighty one. Inventory had no adjustment. Now accounts receivable. That was where we had item four. A check of 250 received from the customer was debited in the cash book, but no other entry was made. So again, if you debit the cash book, you have to credit where the check came, where the money came from, right? Um, and the money came from the account receivable, so you're supposed to, well, reduce account receivable. So 260 minus, sorry, 26,000 minus the 250 is 25,750. Accounts payable, right? So that was where we had the item two, the total of the accounts payable account was overstated, 469. So the figure in accounts payable is 25,800. And if it's overstated, it means it's too high. So we have to subtract it to bring it in line. And then that's going to give us 25,331. Uh, Non-current assets had no adjustment. The capital figure of 152, again, that was item six. The discount was included. So we have to subtract 1,300 from there which will give us um, $158,700. Uh, wages had no adjustment. Utilities, that was item, which one? Three, right. We debited it twice. So it means we put the expense in twice. So we have to take it out, which means we have to decrease it. So we have to subtract the one fifty from the ten six eighty. Right. Now, purchases, returns, and sales were both, we were both omitted, sorry. Purchases, returns is uh, anti-purchases. So we have to credit um, 410. And sales, returns is an anti-sales. So we have to debit. 
right? Uh, so we should there, and then the discount received, right? So we have to show that as the thirteen hundred. And when you add up both sides, well, somehow they end up being the same. <laughs> well, I guess all the errors kind of cancel off each other. Okay, that's it for the first part of the question. There's, actually, there was a little extra part. What was the extra part here? Or state one reason for preparing a trial balance. Okay, I'll give you three. To double check the accuracy of double entry in the ledger, to assist in making adjustments on closing entries, and to assist in preparing financial statements. Now, you, might, you might also say, well, so what about to, to check for errors in the ledger? Well, that's to double check accuracy of double entry, right? Okay, that's it for part A. Let's take a look at part B, shall we? Okay, so part B says, state three types of errors that would not be detected by preparing the trial balance and give an example of each. An example has been provided for you. Example is error, error of omission. Example of error, no entries were made at all for the transaction. It is as if the transaction never occurred. Okay, so they only asked for three. Now, there are seven errors that do not affect the agreement of the trial balance. I'm going to put a list to the errors, oh, sorry, a link to the errors playlist up there in a card, and I'm going to put a link in the description below. So if you need to, what's the word, um, sharp one of your error skills, be sure to check out those, that playlist, right? I break up the errors, the, the whole thing into multiple videos to make it a bit more digestible. I include little practice questions for you as well. So give it a, give it a look if you need to, right? So the first error I'm going to talk about is the error of commission. But well, that's where the wrong person's account is used for double entry. For example, if you had an account for D. Lee and you had another account for B. Lee, right? D as in Daisy, B as in Bruce, right? So let's say you made a sale to B, to Bruce, but you put it in Daisy's account. That's an error of commission, right? The wrong person's account, the wrong personal account is used to record a transaction. The error two, right? Error of principle. This is where the wrong class of account is used to record the transaction. So this one is where, you know, sometimes you have a motor vehicle and you have motor expenses, right? So motor vehicle is an asset. Motor expenses is an expense account. Let's say you paid for motor expenses and instead of debiting motor expenses, you debited motor vehicle. That's an error of principle. The wrong class of account was used. The third item up is error of original entry. This is where the wrong amount is used to record the transaction. So, for example, let's say there was a transaction for $59, but you used $69 for whatever reason. That's an error of original entry. So, when you edited any cash book or the journals, right, those are books of original entry, and then they would then filter down into the, um, the other, other books, right? So, though, if there was an error of original entry, the wrong figure was used, right? Now, the error of transposition seems like it should be the same as the previous one, but there's a difference. That was the same one in part A, where we have the 590 being mixed up to 509. It's a rearrangement of the digits. So this is where the digits of the dollar amount for the transaction are mixed up. And that incorrect dollar amount is used to record the transaction. Right? Uh, the next one is a, is a compensating error. This is where two unrelated entries end up cancelling each other out and thus leaving the trial balance unaffected. That is, the trial balance will still agree. So let's say you have sales, which is a revenue. And that's overstated, right? Now, revenues have credit balances, and overstated means it's too high. And let's say you have purchases, which is an expense, which has a debit balance. And let's say that's also overstated by the same amount. So let's say sales and purchases are both overstated by $100. It means they're too high. They're each too high. The debit side is too high for purchases, and the credit side is too high for sales by 100 So that, that overstatement by the same amount on both sides will cancel out. Right? right? Well, the last error that will not affect the agreement of the trial balance is the complete reversal of entries. It's exactly what it sounds like. This is where the debit and credit entries for a transaction are reversed. That is, the account that was supposed to be debited was credited. And the account that was supposed to be credited was debited. So let's say a cash seal. So for a cash seal, you're supposed to debit cash, credit seals. But if it debited seals and credited cash, that's a complete reversal. Okay. That's it for part B. Let's take a look at part C. Okay, so it reads Jumani, a poultry store's financial year ends on the 31st of December. The following account appears in the ledger. Provision for doubtful debts. Okay, so we have the opening balance on the credit side because it's a contra asset. Uh, if you want to see how to um, do up the provision for doubtful debts account, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below to my tutorial. Be sure to give it a look if you have trouble with this or you just need to revise it, okay? Now, we're seeing the adjusting entry, the income statement item on the debit side, and the closing balance, again, carried down from debit, brought down on credit, which is perfectly fine. 
Now, what are they asking us here? State the meaning of each of the following entries in the provision for doubtful lesser count. So they want to know what is the meaning of the one Jan balance, the meaning of the 31st December 2022 income statement, and the 31st December 2020 balance carried down. All right, now, really and truly, I, I, I want to shout at this paper as in why are you putting this type of question on a paper two? This is a paper one type question. You're wasting space and time and marks, right? CSEC, do better, please. All right, so very quickly, the, the this here, the January 1st, this balance, that's the opening balance, as you can see a second. So 1 Jan 2022, right? This is the opening balance in the provision for doubtful let's account at the start of the year. The 31st December item, that's the adjusting entry. This is the year-end adjusting entry in respect of the change in the provision for doubtful debts, which in this case is a decrease of 200. To increase the provision, you would credit the provision. To decrease it, you'll debit it. And the last item is the 31st December 2022 balance carried down. This is the year-end closing balance in the provision for doubtful debts account. Okay, let me keep them all quiet. That's about it for this question. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three in the Jan 2023 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions on it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some free, interesting PUA answers. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.